Okay. Wait. Voice over IP. Well, and all the associated uh, communications, voice communications tools. And as I say, it's you know mostly integrated collaboration tools these days. But uh, <clears throat> there were a number of insecurities and, and a number of uh, possible uh, vulnerabilities in these uh, systems. But the the biggest problem, the biggest single problem, is that the field is changing rapidly. Now, I mean, it it has been around uh, you know more than 20 years uh, depends on you know what what how far back you want to go and and what kind of systems you want to accept as sort of voice over IP but um, I mean the the fact that uh, long distance calling used to be expensive and now uh, you know, it, people were really pushing the boundaries to try and use voice, just you know, based on sort of circuit switched uh, systems with packet switched, actual packet switched networks. Uh, you know, it's it's been around for a while, but it it was up until five years ago, it was fairly exotic that you know somebody would do this somebody would be able to put together their own asterisk server on Linux or something like that um, and you know five years ago people started hey you know we're locked up here uh, we can't go anywhere um, you know we need to talk to people uh, and we'd like to see their faces while we talk to them so you know let's let's start pushing things here now they can't differentiate on price you know if, if people are starting businesses based on this kind of a thing you can't differentiate on price because after all the existing systems were free so you've got to provide it for free you've got to make it easier and you've got to start adding functions to it so that you can then charge for the added features and so there has been an enormous push. You know, there's always a, a big push in any area of technology to uh, get it out there. You know, be the first, uh, get it, uh, you know, roughly running and, and sell it quickly so that you establish uh, market penetration first. And, and then, you know, somebody's got to try hard to make theirs you know, significantly better than yours before they can start taking some of your customers away. That being the case, the uh, uh, it, it's been even more so with regard to voice over IP because uh, you know there's been a tremendous demand. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, systems that are going there. They are having to add features, build features, improve features in order to make it worthwhile for somebody to use them and pay for it when they can go to somebody else and get it for free. So um, we have all kinds of features being added. And when you're you know, adding functions, adding features very quickly, they don't always get tested properly. So, um, you know, that's that's the basis for an awful lot of the vulnerabilities there. But what kind of vulnerabilities? Okay. Um, first of all, uh, you know, well, security is definitely an afterthought when you are trying to produce uh, code and features this fast. And so... Um, you know, they're not concerned with building secure operating systems. Um, and of course, there is an operating system uh, on, on VoIP phones, the same as there is, you know, iOS for uh, iPhones and Android for the rest of the market type of thing. Um, so, but, you know, they, security is definitely an afterthought, even though an awful lot of these people are selling to businesses. And again, 
you know, what uh, uh, Balmer said about, you know, people don't care about security. Over and over again, he has proven correct. Anyway, um, so the uh, uh, telephony, IP telephony uh, intelligence is advancing rapidly. You've got an explosion in, in functions, in code. Um, one of the, the major things is it, an awful lot of this is managed by IP or web-based administration. And uh, the web was never intended for uh, connection-oriented service, for um, uh, you know connection and administrative functions. It was you know initially seen as simply a reference situation, and so layering you know commerce and business and security and uh, management onto it. Um, it's just, you know, it's really pushing things. Uh, we've got, um, well, it's, it's connected over an untrusted IP network. I mean, let's face it, you know, it's, it's over the internet. So you've, you've got, uh, you know, in the old days, the telephone company owned the lines. Uh, they had ways and means of determining if somebody was tapping a phone because they were looking for people uh, stealing telephone service. Um, and, you know, so you had uh, somebody looking out for their concern because it was to their financial advantage to do so. Um, now it's, it's not. Uh, you know, everybody is, you know, it's somebody else's problem. It's, it's an externality. Um, so, um, you have to, you know, that, automatically there's security implications there. Um, denial of service attacks against uh, media, um, sometimes um, I, it's, you know, well, I, you know, denial of service, it's rendering it unusable. Um, the authentication, again, uh, we understand an, an awful lot of the users here are not experts and so the authentication should be user transparent but you've got uh, authentication for the use for the service for the uh, administration um, for uh, settings that you may uh, want to have or definitely not want to have and again you know how much of that can we do and, and still make it uh, transparent and simple for the user? Um, the uh, well, the the IP phones themselves, um, you know, a hardware phone, um, uh, they've got their uh, you know their firmware built into it, and and again, you know, they've, they've well uh, in centralized systems they may have. Uh, some intelligence there, but they may have a fair amount of functionality added to the phones themselves. And then there's soft phones. There's, uh, you know, people just plugging a headset into their computer and, uh, you know, it's it's got to be able to recognize that this USB device is a headset and should be accessible to the telephony. And how do you validate and authenticate that? Um, uh, along with the uh, the user authentication, the um, uh, ability to use certain uh, group functions, setting up calls, um, uh, sending messages, calling everybody, uh, bridging everyone together into a conference call of the entire company sometimes. Um, can that be done and do we want everybody to be able to do it? Uh, but, you know, with the, the soft phones there, even if you mandate, well, you know, we are going to use X brand uh, hardware-based IP phones. Yeah, really? Um, you know, what happens when uh, one of your marketing people decides that their soft phone gives them better functionality, better quality than the hardware 
IP phone that you have provided them. They're going to install a rogue software. So how do you know uh, the different types of uh, soft phones and even hard phones on uh, your network in that kind of a situation? Um, so there's, you know, there's going to be remote access attacks. There's going to be local access attacks. There's going to be some of your people who are attacking the system so that they can do something that you have have not provided to them. Uh, you know, is uh, they they are going to want that, and so they may they may not be seeing it as an attack. They may be seeing it as fixing a problem that you created. Uh, so there's that. Um, the um, oh, I, I mentioned the firmware involved in in the hardware uh, IP phones. So uh, unauthorized firmware and applications involved in in those things. Somebody installing, uh, reinstalling the firmware to do that, and then uh, you know various forms of of protocol attacks. So. All kinds of things you have to consider if you're going that route. All of these are potential vulnerabilities and issues that you need to address in terms of security.